Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah continuing on our study of la ilaha illallah the meaning of la ilaha illallah the shahada the first part of the shahada from the shahadatain we reach the sixth condition of Imam Hafid al Hakimi's um, his treatise on La ilaha illallah, taken from his book Ma'araj al Qubur. And he said the sixth condition is ikhlas or sincerity. The sixth condition for the Shahada is sincerity. And sincerity. Ikhlas, of course, ikhlas for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with sincerity from the heart. That you do not, that there's no, uh, nothing other that you direct your worship to in all the various forms of worship. That is ikhlas, and that involves the intentions, the niya, your intention. The Prophet sallallahu said, he said, Verily, actions are tied to the intention. And verily, every one will get that which they intended. Letting us know that the intention, that this is one of the conditions to having our deeds accepted in Islam as well. Al-Ikhlas wa mutaba that you have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your worship and that you follow that it, your act of worship is in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, getting back to Imam al-Hakami mentioning the sixth condition being ikhlas, sincerity uh, in purifying one's heart from shirk. So he said, sincere, uh, sincerity is purifying actions from all the stains of shirk with righteous intention. And then he said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, surely the religion is for Allah alone. And this is in Surah Al Zumar, verse 3. And Allah the Almighty said, And they were commanded not but that they should worship Allah and worship none but Him alone. And that's in Surah Al Bayna. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for Kitab al Kareem, so worship Allah alone by doing righteous deeds sincerely for Allah's sake uh, alone. So that negates doing deeds for anyone else. That means when you pray, it's you're praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason you go to the masjid is you go to the masjid to, masjid to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And you do it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to make sure that the people in your neighborhood see that you pray. And not to make sure that the people think that you're pious or righteous, but rather you do it sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are in a great need of being sincere in our actions as an ummah, because we have so many people doing things for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and, and making shirk in their ibadah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, say, Verily I am commanded to worship Allah alone by obeying Him and doing religious deeds sincerely for Allah's sake. And this is in uh, Surah Al Zumar, verse 11. And Allah the Almighty said, Say, Allah alone, I worship you by doing religious deeds sincerely for His sake only. Not to show off, not setting up rivals with him and worship. And that's also in uh, Surah Al Zumar, uh, verse uh, 14. And Allah the Almighty said, Verily the hypocrites will be in the lowest, lowest depths of the fire. No helper will you find for them, except those who repent, do righteous good deeds, hold fast to Allah, purify their religion for Allah. Uh, and this is, and uh, uh, by worshiping none but Allah and do good for Allah's sake only, not to show off. That's the commentary. And then, then they will be with the believers. 
So this shows, and this is uh, in Surah Tunisa, that the hypocrites are in the lowest parts of the hellfire. And the hypocrites, ex uh, they actually, that their crime and their sin is that it's the opposite of sincerity. That they do deeds for people and they don't even believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we mentioned in, in Surah Al-Baqarah yesterday, we mentioned uh, the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah about the munafiqun that they uh, uh -huh. So they say that we we believe uh, we believe in, in, in Allah and the Day of Judgment. But they're not believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates their belief, even though they say it on their tongue. So these are the people who might say La ilaha illallah. They take the shahada, obviously. Because they have they believe they've fooled the believers and they believe they've even fooled the law subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather they disbelieve. يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضًا فَزَادَهُمْ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Naam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that uh, they, these hypocrites, they try to fool Allah. يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And they try to deceive the believers. But they only deceive themselves. SubhanAllah, that's very powerful. Because they think in their minds that they deceive, they're deceiving the believers. And, and perhaps they are deceiving the believers. Because when we... Ahlul Sunnah, Ahlul Sunnah, when you see people, you judge them by their apparent... If you believe, you see that they're uh, showing the signs of belief, we believe they're a believer. You don't say, oh, I think he's a monafic. This is what groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Al-Shabaab and Boko Haram, all of them, they judge people by if they have muwafaqa with their jama'ah, with their group, that they have to agree with their group. Then they say they're believers. But instead, to them, everyone is a kafir, basically, until they prove that they're a believer and a believer on their minhaj, on their methodology, on how they understand Islam, which is a, 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 a wicked... Uh, mistake, and it's the sunnah of the Khawarij. It's the way of the original sect, one of the first sects in Islam, who deviated from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah by making takfir of other believers for the major sins. And so, the hypocrites, going back to the hypocrites, they say openly they believe, but inside they disbelieve. And they don't dece deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they only deceive themselves. They've only deceived themselves. All of this is a negation of ikhlas because they're doing this, this to show off for the people or just to be around the believers or to spy on the believers. Whatever their, their various uh, reasons for doing this, for being munafiqun, uh, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that trait. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Then the Shaykh, he says, and there are other similar ayat. He said in the Sahih of Al-Bukhari and the authority of the Prophet wasallam, of these people happiest with my intercession is the one who said, La ilaha illallah, sincerely from his heart and from his self. So this is the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, letting us know that along with saying La ilaha illallah, you have to have sincerity. You have to be sincere. You have to be truthful and sincere in your heart that it has to be solely, uh, you know, a pure belief in the heart. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, of those people happiest with my intercession, this hadith affirms the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is the one who said, La ilaha illallah, sincerely from his heart. Also in the Sahih of Bukhari on the authority of Uthman ibn uh, bin Malik radiallahu anhu from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, Indeed Allah prohibited the fire from the one who said, La ilaha illallah, desir uh, desiring by it the face of Allah azza wa jal. 
the Prophet وسلم, mentioned that indeed Allah prohibited the fire for the one who said La ilaha illallah. So La ilaha illallah is a means for having the, uh, yourself being prohibited from the fire. It's also the key al miftah in the Jannah. Uh, and then what the Prophet Sallallahu say, which is the shahid, the point of this hadith, desiring by it the face of Allah Azza wa Jal. And by desiring by it the face of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, this means ikhlas. This means sincerity to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. In the Jami' of Tirmidhi, on the authority of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a slave of Allah does not ever say la ilaha illallah sincerely, except that the doers, uh, except that the doors to the heavens are open for him until it reaches the arsh, as long as he keeps away from the major sins. A Tirmidhi said the hadith via this chain is Hassan Gharib. So this is a hadith in Sahih, uh, in, in uh, Tirmidhi, and, which has been graded Hassan, and in which the Prophet wasallam said, and exalted, the, uh, exalted or mentioned the praiseworthy trait of the one who says la ilaha illallah sincerely. And that is the point of the hadith, of mentioning the hadith there. The seventh condition Al Muhabba, love. Uh, and the Shaykh said, Hafid al Hakami, Rahmatullahi, Rahmatullahi, he said, which is having love for this statement. So when you say La ilaha illallah, you should have love for it. It shouldn't be just, we just say La ilaha illallah, we make dhikr without thinking, without understanding, without ikhlas, without sidq and truthfulness, but rather we need to actualize that and have love in our heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, which is having love for this statement, what it necessitates and indicates, loving its people, that, that's a part of al bara loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hating disobedience to Allah. He said, and loving its people, those who act upon it, adhering to its conditions, and to hate what violates it, means hating shirk, that you hate kufr and shirk, you hate people, you hate the witchcraft, you hate the soothsaying, you hate all of this uh, horoscopes and all this because this is all, these are all things that negate Tawheed to, to and they negate uh, uh, Iman and they negate La ilaha illallah. Allah Azza wa Jal said, and of mankind are some who take others besides Allah as rivals. They love them as they love Allah, but those who believe love Allah more than anything else. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 165. So Ahli Iman, they love Allah more than anything else. And then there are those people who love others more than they love Allah. And then there are those people who love Allah and they love other things equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the mu'min, the believer, they love Allah more. And this is why, and this is Dalil or evidence for Muhabba being a condition for the Shahada. And Allah Ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, O you will believe, whoever from amongst you turns back from his religion, meaning Islam, Allah will bring a people whom he will love, and they will love him. Humble towards the believer, stern towards the disbelievers, fighting in the way of Allah, and never afraid of the blame of the blamers. In Surah Al Ma'idah, Verse 54. So this shows us again that love, loving Allah this is from Iman. And this is a condition for the Shahada, that you have love. You have to know what it means. You have to have sincerity in your heart. You have to have truthfulness in your heart. And you have to love. Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us that his worshippers, the believers, are more severe in their love for him. That is because they do not associate anyone else with him in their love for him. Unlike those from the Mushrikeen, who claim they loved him, but then also took partners with Allah, whom they loved just as they loved him. So there are those, as I mentioned, who love Allah and they love uh, other, uh, others with Allah equal to Allah. It's okay to have natural love. 
It's okay to love your parents, to love your spouse, to love your children, to love your neighbors and, and, and kin and so forth and so on and so forth and the love in the believers. But it's just not equating that love to the love that you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the love you have for Allah is muhabba ubudiyya. This is, uh, this is love which is, uh, you know, contained in worship. It's a type of, it, it's so, such an extent of love, this involves worship. Because you don't bow before your parents, even if you love your parents, you don't make sujood to them, but you make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sign that the slave of Allah loves his Lord is that he submits to what Allah loves, even if it opposes his desires, and that he also hates what his Lord hates, even if his desires are inclined to it. The slave of Allah is loyal to whomever Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are loyal to, and he has enmity towards whomever he uh, has enmity towards Allah. Whoever hates Allah, then of course you naturally you hate, uh, hate this person, because they hate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They hate the one who created them, who gave them the ability to hate. Who gave them the choice between kufr and iman. And then he mentions about ahli iman. He says he follows his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, imitates his example. So following the sunnah is how you show your love for Allah and show your love for the kalimatillah. Uh, imitates his example and accepts his guidance. All of these are signs of the presence of the conditions of love. It is not conceivable to have love without its conditions being present. So those conditions of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you try to follow, you're striving to follow the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he actualized ibadah. He was the best of example for how to practice tawheed. It was the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Tabarak Ta'ala said, Have you seen him who was taken as his God, his own desire? Would you then be a wakil over him? Meaning someone who takes care of his affairs and so forth. And Allah the Almighty said, Have you seen him who takes his own lust as his, his God? And Allah, knowing him as such, left him astray and sealed his hearing and his heart and put a cover on his sight. Who then will guide him after Allah? So this verse here is very indicative. It illustrates what we see in the reality of our world. We see so many people, they take their desires as gods. They will do anything to gain their desires. If it is wealth, they will kill, steal, rob, cheat to gain it. If it is their physical desires, they will do anything to gain it. To gain satisfaction, they will do anything. Anything with anything or with anyone. That is just, just for the fulfillment of the, 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 their wickedness in their hearts. Because it's like their, their desires, their heart is hungry for evil. And so they just grab any evil. They will do anything for it. And there's so many countless examples. These are the people, they take their desires as gods. And Allah knows them and he leaves them astray. Whoever Allah guides, he is guided. And sealed his hearing and his heart. So some people, they went so far astray. And on top of that, they are, they don't really have an inclination towards Iman. So Allah leaves them astray. He lets them, the Prophet ﷺ said, a jinn, a dunya sijin al mu'min jinn al kafir. That the, this life is a prison for the believer and it is a paradise for the disbeliever. Some explain this hadith that the disbeliever, they because their desires, they can do anything they want. Or, so, or although especially those people who don't have any, who are lawless in their life. They, they can do anything they want. Do anything they want for money. Do anything they want for satisfaction. Eat anything they want. Drink anything they want if they want. To their fill. Till they get sick and then they can do more. So this is the person, they're, they're never fulfilled. And their desires 
become the object of their full love and their desires can even become their lords. So everyone who worships other than Allah along with him, then in reality he worships his own desire. Every sin by which Allah is disobeyed, it is due to the slave of Allah submitting to his desires rather than to the commands of Allah and the avoidance of his prohibitions. Allah, the Almighty said regarding loyalty and enmity for the sake of Allah, indeed there's been an excellent example for you in Ibrahim and those with him when they said to their people, verily we are free from you and whatever you worship besides Allah, we've rejected you and there has begun between us and you hostility and hatred forever until you believe in Allah alone. Uh, this is in Surah Al-Muntahina, verse 4. And Allah, the Almighty said, you will not find... You will not find the people who believe in Allah in the last day, befriending those who oppose Allah and His Messenger, even though they were their fathers, their sons, their brothers, or kindred, or their kindred. For such He has written faith in their hearts, meaning the, the people who do not take their worldly alliances over their alliance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah has written on their heart, Iman. Those people, they have Iman. They have, they, they have Iman. Because they love Allah more. And Allah the Almighty says, O you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as awliya. They are but awliya, meaning protectors and helpers of one another. And if any amongst you takes them as awliya, then surely he is one of them. So these are verses about loving and hating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that your, your true love and your true companionship should be with Ahli Iman. And Allah the Almighty said, O you who believe, take not for awliya, your fathers and your brothers, if they prefer disbelief to be belief. Whoever of you does so, then he is one of the mean the wrongdoers. That doesn't mean you can't be good and kind and have natural love for your parents and your, and your kin. No, that's not what that means. But it means to prefer them in their disbelief and take them as supporters in, oh, instead of the mu'minin, instead of the believers, instead of ahli iman. Say, if your fathers, your sons, and your brothers, your wives, your kindred, the wealth that you have gained, the commerce in which you fear, a decline, and the dwellings in which you delight are dearer to you than Allah and his messenger, and striving hard and fighting in his cause, then wait until Allah brings about his decision and Allah guides not the people who are rebellious, disobedient to Allah. And that's verse Toba, uh, that's Surah Toba, verse 23 and 24. And Allah the Almighty said, O you who believe, take not my enemies and your enemies as friends. Mumtahina, verse 1, to the end of the Surah. And there are other ayat. And then he said, so to show this love and love for the Shahada, following the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah ta'ala said regarding the conditions for following his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam say if you really love Allah then follow me Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins and Allah is all forgiving most merciful say obey Allah and the, and the messenger but if they turn away then Allah does not like the disbelievers so Allah has made that that the ones who turn away from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is believers and this is Ali Imran verse 31 what's very important to have is understanding those people call themselves Qur'aniyun and that they are the Qur'an society, and they negate the sunnah, or they don't believe in the sunnah, or they say the sunnah is fabricated, or they have all these other arguments. This is disbelief. These people, some of them are purely disbelievers, because they don't even believe in the Qur'an, because we just read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَعْتِيُوا رُسُولُ In several places in the, in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. You obey Allah by what? By following the Quran. And you obey the Messenger by what? By following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And, and that's how you obey Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There are three characteristics. Whoever has them finds the sweetness of a man that Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to him than other than them. That when he loves a person, he loves him only for the sake of Allah. And that he hates to return to disbelief after Allah has saved him from it, just as he hates to be thrown into the hellfire, narrated Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Anas, radiallahu ta'anhu. Also Bukhari and Muslim narrated on the authority of Anas and Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'anhuma, who said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, None of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than his son, his father, and all of mankind. That is what the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brought 
information about Allah, the commands relating to what Allah loves and is pleased with, and prohibitions of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes and rejects. And we'll continue on in the next sitting, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.